Hey there, welcome back. In this video, we're going to cover server side rendering with ASP.NET Core, which is also going to include Node.js. Okay, so to cover quickly, in short, what is happening right now is we make a request to the server and the server returns some text to the browser. Now, when the browser receives the text, it's not concerned whether it's HTML, JavaScript, XML, whatever. It just needs to receive that text. And after it has received the text, that's when it actually goes and decides what it is and what to do with it. So what we send now is the text to the browser and essentially it is trying to show the HTML from the text that we have sent. But in our Vue.js application, we don't actually have any HTML until the JavaScript is executed. So we have a blank screen until the JavaScript is downloaded first and then it is executed. And then the browser updates the HTML based on the JavaScript executed. And then the text that it ends up with this is what we actually want to send to the browser. This is what contains the HTML that should be rendered, but it also contains the state of the application at that point after execution. So if you think about it, we navigate to a URL, and then basically from the start of the view application to the end, it has to find the URL that it's at and what should be executed at that URL. So to conclude, what we want to do is end up with HTML, and the JavaScript application state at a point in time of rendering that HTML. How do we imitate the browser on the server side? Well, the only way to do this now is to use Node.js and you will need Node.js installing. I will leave a link in the description. So go ahead and download that. But the process is same as before. We're gonna take some text that can be anything, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and we send it to Node.js. Now the application or the code that we essentially write in Node.js, that's where we basically decide how we're going to deal with that text. And essentially when we're done, we're going to return that text. And that text is going to end up in our Razor page, which is then going to be processed by the server and returned back to the client to actually display the text in the browser. So a little bit of a higher overview, so we can like sort of step back and we receive a request to the .NET uh, server. And that's uh, when the .NET uh, server essentially decides what controller it is, it goes to the action, and then it gets uh, the Razor page, and this is where the CSHTML lives. So it's a combination of uh, C Sharp and HTML, and uh, we essentially spin up a instance of the Node server, and we go ahead and execute the JavaScript that we have uh, created for rendering our application, all right? and uh, once that has done, that is, again, that's returning the text to our Razor page. And then C Sharp compiles that Razor page. And again, we just end up with text that is going to be either HTML or JavaScript. And then .NET returns the response, which is, again, just text. So I'd say a more correct way to look at this. But if you are not satisfied with this explanation, and this might help you think of it a little bit better, then uh, I just want to show you a different point of view. So the outermost square is our .NET application. The request comes in uh, like a pipe, and it goes through the middleware, and then into controller, into the action, into the CSHTML page, and then into the Node.js square. And whatever happens in the Node.js square, that just gets replaced with text. So now all we have is a CSHTML page with just some HTML inside of it, and maybe some JavaScript. And then we have that response in the action, in the controller, and then all .NET does is essentially returns that text. So you can just imagine these, the smaller squares disappearing into, or rather transforming into text, and all .NET ends up is text at the end and returns that to the browser. Okay, so the ultimate big picture of how we're going to achieve this processing for the Node.js server so this is essentially what we're going to try to do. And at the, uh, at the moment, if you pay attention to the source square, uh, our universal code application and the, and the app.js is what we actually have as our view application. But instead of app.js, we have main.js, and that is what we are currently sending to the browser. So we will have to create two files. One is called server entry, and one is client entry. And what that will do is that will grab our main.js and once we put it through Webpack, we'll have a server bundle and a client bundle. And what they will allow, what the server bundle will allow us to do 
is execute the application on the server side and produce the HTML. So that's the step that I was talking about here. Okay. And what, once that's done, uh, we basically we send the HTML and uh, the application, the client bundle, will be at the same point in time as the server bundle. So if we navigate to a certain page, essentially the server bundle will need to perform some actions to render that HTML page and the client bundle will need to travel to the same place. Otherwise, if we just send the main.js to the server, it's gonna try to re-execute those steps and we don't wanna do that. We basically, we want to bring the client bundle up to speed with the server bundle. And that's essentially just the overview of what is going to happen with our JavaScript files. And if you're a little bit disoriented now, don't worry about it. In the next episode, that's when we're actually going to build the server bundle and the client bundle. But today, we're actually just going to set up the Node.js instance and see how that can help us execute JavaScript on the server side. So to run Node.js in our ASP.NET Core application, we will need a bridge. And that bridge is a JavaScript library, so we can use npm to install it. So into our dev dependencies, I'm going to install ASP.NET pre-rendering. Okay, so let's install that. So once that has installed, let's quickly again check it. Package.json. There it is. So now that we have that, we can we need to actually use this package to run JavaScript code on the server side, okay? So let's go ahead into our view app, and in here I'm gonna create a file called bootserver.js, and in here I'm gonna take this pre-renderer, let me make the code a little bit bigger, equals require, so remember on the server side we don't have ba ba babel, babel, and if we do want it, we can use Webpack to basically transform this boot server to use ES6 uh, syntax, but it's going to be really simple for now, uh, so I'm not gonna touch that. Uh, and I want to use ASP.NET pre-rendering here. So here I have my pre-renderer. So now what I wanna do is I wanna go into modules, exports equals pre-renderer, and here I wanna call the method create server renderer, okay? And this is going to take in a function, and this function has some parameters, okay? So this function needs to return a promise, so new promise. And in here, we'll say resolve, reject. If you don't know how to, or like what promises are, go look it up. Uh, and, but this is essentially it. So from this uh, function, we're going to be returning a promise into the create server renderer, and then whatever that returns is exported from the module, okay? What do we actually want to resolve? Well, if uh, you paid attention to the presentation, we want to resolve some text, so we are literally just gonna send some text. So let's go ahead and resolve to an object that has HTML, and in here, Let's create some simple HTML. So I'm gonna create a header tag and I'm gonna say is hello world. Okay, and these parameters here, let's go ahead and console log them so we can take a look at what they are. So console log params, just like this. So we're logging some parameters and we're returning a promise that resolves to some text here, okay? And uh, we don't, we're not really gonna use reject in case something happens, uh, some error in our uh, view app execution, but we're not there yet. So now that we're, we have this boot server that essentially executes code on the server, uh, let's go ahead and use that in our CS HTML file and uh, create some text that it can use. Uh, let's go into views. And in here, I, what I will need to do is create a view imports .cshtml file because the way that you execute this file is through a sp.net tag and for this we'll need to add the tag helper. So add tag helper, we wanna grab all from Microsoft uh, ASP.NET Core Spa Services. 
um, Microsoft. Okay, it looks like I spelled that correctly. Let's go into home index. I'm going to comment all of this stuff out and I will create a div. And in here, I will give this a tag of, tag of ASP pre render module. So this should be available if uh, you have typed this out correctly. So this namespace has to be correct. So in case you are not getting this tag helper, double check this name. And in here, we want to specify the path to our um, boot server. So that's going to be in the view app slash boot server. And just remember that this path, uh, th this attack helper is going to be executed on the server side. So this path won't actually reach the browser. So the browser doesn't have to navigate to the view app folder and try to execute the boot server. All right. So this is it. Really, uh, Microsoft really makes it simple. Uh, so let's go ahead and use .NET run. Okay, let me bring up the page. I'll make it full screen. Let's refresh here. And okay, so I have typed in view blog, or rather view app, view equals app. So the path was incorrect. So let's refresh that. And here we have hello world. Okay, so if we look at the HTML, we can see that it actually returns the text and there are no other JavaScript files. So it's, it is not looking at boot server. That is all happening on the back end. Okay. And all we end up with is hello world. So what we can do is let's go ahead into the boot server uh, and let's assume that we are going to execute our view app here. And what we're going to end up with is let's say something equals uh, two multiplied by two, and then we can basically say plus something. Okay. And then if we go back here and again, we refresh again, the only thing that we get is text. So actually let me clear this log here. So yeah. So here you can see that we, all we are doing is getting text and we're executing JavaScript on the server side. So that's essentially what we're going to replace this comment with. Uh, this comment right here, we're going to replace it with executing our view app on the server side. Okay. Now let's quickly take a look at this parameters I'm logging here. So here you can see the object and all this is really is it just contains some information about the router and basically the information that is being passed into this function through the HTTP request that is going to be typed in here. So let's go ahead and assume we're going to blog number two and we might pass in some parameter uh, called name Bob. All right, so if I go back here and I scroll down to where I log it again, you can see different parameters are being filled out here. So this is how we're essentially going to help the view router navigate to the certain route. But this is essentially it for this simple setup of a Node.js server, just so you're aware, Node.js is now running in the background and is executing JavaScript code. This will be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. If you have any questions, you know to leave them in the comments section. And as always, see you in my next episode.